Chris, good afternoon. Thank you for your time this afternoon. Uh, you are seen by many as an informed energy analyst, uh, and your views and opinions are highly regarded yeah, by the energy sector and the general public. However, there seems to be an, uh, an impression or perception that you are opposed to nuclear energy. So where do you stand? Well, I must say, I'm not in any camp. Uh, not in the renewable camp and not in the nuclear camp. And honestly, being labelled in this way is not very helpful. Uh, it's a kind of a personalisation of the issues. Uh, and, and to me, it's a sign uh, that people cannot deal with the real issues. Uh, and therefore, they resort to personalisation, labelling and putting you in a little box. Uh, and I'm certainly not opposed to nuclear, not on ideological grounds, and certainly not on technology grounds. So Chris, uh, in the past you were seen as a pro-nuclear proponent. Mm -hmm. um, what has changed? Has anything changed? Yes, things certainly have changed. You know, up to a decade or so ago, there was no other option except nuclear and hydro, if one is needing non-CO2 or low-carbon uh, technologies. Uh, and, and, and up to 10 years ago, the only low carbon technologies that, ex that existed for power generation was nuclear and hydro. Similarly, up until only a few years ago, even though there were alternatives in the form of renewable energy, renewable energy was not the least cost option. And until two or three years ago, nuclear power was still the least cost non-carbon emitting technology available for generation. Of course, this has completely changed now. A tipping point has been reached. The price of wind and solar PV have come crashing down. And all of a sudden now, there are alternatives uh, to nuclear and hydro. And in fact, nuclear is no longer the least cost option. Uh, and a blend of wind, solar PV, uh, gas, and pump storage uh, are now uh, the least cost option for new generation capacity going forward. So Chris then, uh, what new technology options exist and, and what do you think of the correct technology mix then for South Africa? Well the way I see it, uh, there are three broad technology options that we could look at. Plus of course some blends of all three. But let's just look at them in the extreme cases. Firstly, there is the big nuclear option. This is big nuclear mega plants to replace a very significant portion of the old coal-fired plants in South Africa. Okay. And that is certainly one option going forward and certainly an option that seems to be favoured uh, by ESCOM. Secondly, there's what I call the coal, more coal and still more coal option. And that is to, to stick to what we know well. 75% uh, of South Africa's electricity currently comes from coal. Uh, we've been building coal-fired power plants for decades. Uh, and there's an argument that we have got plenty of coal reserves and we should stick to what we know best and use our natural resources and have coal, more coal and still more coal going forward. And then thirdly, <clears throat> there's the option of wind, solar PV, uh, gas and uh, pump storage. And this is what I call, a, it's a low carbon option, just as nuclear is a low carbon option. Uh, but uh, it's an option to deliver flexible, reliable, uh, baseload capacity uh, in a flexible way at lower cost than the nuclear option. So those are the three broad uh, technology uh, options, nuclear, coal, and what I call flexible power. So Chris, a number of people are now speaking about distributed generation instead of centralized generation. So what, in your opinion, is the future of solar PV rooftop installations? Solar rooftop PV uh, has not been considered at all in the draft IRP 2016. Despite the fact that in fact uh, rooftop PV is becoming a huge sector globally and, and certainly it's starting uh, to make inroads in South Africa. So I believe that the Department of Energy, ESCOM and municipal distributors ignore this growing technology uh, as, a, as an alternative to, to, to conventional uh, grid electricity. They ignore this at their peril. Uh, this is potentially a huge disruptor 
to the traditional business model of utilities and distributors. And customers are choosing cleaner and cheaper options uh, to reduce both their costs as well as their dependency on uh, utilities and grid power.